What's up guys? Welcome back. Here we are, it's the day after Easter. I hope that everyone had a wonderful uh, Easter day, all things considered. I know it was a little weird, you know, not being able to go and see your families and um, I just hope that everybody practiced their safe distancing. Uh, so today what we're gonna talk about is Easter leftovers. Now, if you're like me, I still had a huge piece of ham um, because I just, again, can't cook for a couple people so got some ham um we're gonna do a ham pot pie today so i figured it's a really good way to use some of it up and i'll also talk about a couple other ways that you can use it so got my ham here left over got some potatoes to put on our ham pot pie um we're gonna go ahead and pull the ham out we'll start cutting it up and like i said i'm gonna show you a couple other things that you can save it for to to use it for all right guys, we got our ham here. As you can see, I kind of hacked away at it whenever it was in a pan. So what I'm gonna do is actually make this into a smaller manageable piece. I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. And then this side, I'm just gonna do a straight cut down so that it kind of evens it up for what I wanna show. So if you like to have maybe ham steaks for breakfast, this is another good place to, to use it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slice a couple of ham steaks out of this. I'm gonna throw these in a Ziploc and uh, just be able to freeze them for you know breakfast, pull them out, have ham steaks with breakfast, or maybe even dinner down the road. But the nice thing is, is I'll be able to freeze it and save it for a later date. So I'm really just gonna be dealing with the fact that we're making ham pot pie today. The best part about it is this doesn't have to be technical. You can make your ham chunks as big or as little as you want. I'm gonna go more of like a medium dice for mine. Got all this sliced here. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and just start chunking this up. So that's the size I'm looking for. Um, and I'll go ahead and get it cut and we'll go from it. So I got most of my ham cut up. As you can see, I still have just a couple pieces here. But our pot, it's about half, half full. Again, I'm gonna end up making too much even though I really try not to. So we're gonna go ahead and take our pot. I'm gonna fill it with some cold water. And I don't wanna fill it, but we're gonna cover the ham and then probably about halfway above where the ham is at. What I'm gonna do is then put that on the stove to start. That's gonna make a really good ham stock. You wanna kinda of put it on and let it go for about an hour. Um, I also have an onion back here that I'm gonna take and put in there just for some aromatics and flavor. If you have some ham base at home, if that's something that you like to cook with, go ahead and throw a little bit of that in there just to get your flavor. Since I don't, again, that's why I'm gonna go ahead and take, as you can see, it's, you know, about halfway above it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and take, put that on, and I'm gonna let it go, like I said, nice, like, slow boil for about an hour. So another thing that I love is breakfast. I mean, honestly, I would eat breakfast all the time. So what I'm gonna take and do with this, is we're going to turn it into something that'll work as a nice breakfast thing. So I like to have things that are in the freezer that are kind of ready to go um, because what you can do is small dice this one. So it's a little smaller, but you can pull it then right from the freezer, right into a pan. So if it's you know, breakfast, one morning that you feel like making, I'm gonna have this. Then I got a red potato that I've just had it hanging out. Not just one potato, I have a half a bag hanging out. But random, like I was holding like one potato for fun, I guess. But again, going on smaller dices with this, because the potato is not cooked, I want it to cook in the, in the morning a lot quicker. So we're gonna do our small dice. And then mix this. And like I said, 
you can pull it out one morning, throw it in a frying pan, go ahead and fry it up, scramble a couple eggs, toss it in there, make yourself, make yourself a nice little breakfast scramble. Okay, so I got my onions put in. I'm starting to get a little steam out of there as it's starting to get ready. I'm gonna come over now, we're gonna get our potatoes ready to put in there. So, got our potatoes here. I got, what, one, two, three, four, seven of them. So, I know I've shown this before in other videos about peeling them, but I've always found, and this is most of what people have at home, but if you, Peel both ends. First. Then you've got more surface area to work with. As you can see, I don't really like these. But, you get the idea. So, I'm gonna switch to my peeler because I've got those motions down a little bit better. I'll get all these peeled and then we'll go ahead and get them diced so start from there and all right got those peeled now what i'm going to do is uh take them about a medium dice because i don't want them to break down too much uh they're going to be in the liquid for a good while once that starts to boil i'm pretty much going to drop them in there and let them cook with it and then like i said it's going to still go for about another 45 minutes and then we'll work on our noodles I don't know if I mentioned this in the last one, but I wanted to point out that I was smart enough to remember my rag this time. But I'm going to flip this because I had a ham on that side. So with this rag, if you're using it at home to stop your cutting board from moving, make sure that it's completely like wet and then wring it out. It'll just help that card cardboard cutting board from sliding across. So get those medium diced. Honestly, it's gonna take too long, so I'd rather just do this. Okay, perfect. Potatoes are cut and ready to go. So, right on cue, my pot started to boil back here. So I don't want it to be that rapid, so I'm gonna turn it down five here. And I'm gonna go ahead and toss my potatoes in without trying to make a mess. Gorgeous. Like I said, that's it for that step. That's gonna sit back there, go for a good 45 minutes till it reduces some, uh, gets that ham flavor built into it to make more of a ham broth. So we're gonna go ahead and start on our homemade noodles. Okay. In our bowl here, I have about two cups of flour. And then you don't have to do this. If you want yours to just stay plain, you don't have to, but I'm gonna add um, some oregano nice dried oregano i've actually never been taught how to make these like old-fashioned style and there's a million ways that you can make these everybody has their own preference uh garlic powder so i'm gonna show you a way that i was just playing around one day in the kitchen um and this is kind of how it came out and i've gotten a lot of compliments so then just some parsley well that, that comes out terrible Smack it. There we go. A little bit of onion. Don't forget, it's all the way on the other side of the kitchen. Salt and pepper. I'm going to do about a tablespoon of olive oil. And then I'm gonna mix this part up first. So that all of my spices are mixed in there. I know that there's some people that don't use eggs. I have just had luck with making my dough this way. So I'm gonna to toss one egg in. And 
and then the rest of this is just gonna come by the So we got some milk here that I'm gonna add. We'll start there, about a half a cup I would say. Let's take it to the back. There. Now I'm a big hand can all can right? Before you add more liquid, make sure that you get it nice and stirred, scraping your sides well. Because honestly, by the looks of that, I'm not going to have to add anything. Now this is for me. This is the way that I like to do it. What I'm going to end up taking and doing from here is once my stock reduces over here by half, um, I'm just going to take these. I'm going to make little dumplings like this and basically drop them in the water and let them cook. Now, if you want to make noodles, what you wouldn't want it to sweat. You're going to need to get a little drier. And then at that point, you can throw it out on the counter with some more flour down, roll them out with a rolling pin, and then cut them into the size square noodles that you want. Um, but for ease, I hate cleaning up the counter after flour. And anytime I use flour, I look like it exploded all over me every time. So for ease and not wanting to have to do a lot of cleanup, this is the way I'm going to do mine today. So I'm going to throw that in the fridge, let it sit, let it rest, and then once the pot's ready, we'll come back, start dropping in our noodles, and check it out. All right, guys, this thing's been going for about an hour. You can see that we have our reduction marks on the side. Actually, you can't see anything. So it's just been going. So you want to keep this boil going when you start your noodles so let me go ahead and sorry about that it's nice and steamy so we're basically just going to go ahead and grab make the noodles the size you want them and we're just going to drop them in Got all the noodles dropped in, so you can see everything, I, you know, I gotta remember to stop doing that. Everything is nice and bubbly. Um, the best part about it is the starch from the potatoes and then now the flour that's in your noodles is gonna cook out and then it's gonna thicken this, hopefully to the part we want it to like be. If we have to thicken it up, I'll show you a little trick to do that as well. Um, but I think that this is going to work perfect. So this is going to cook for another half hour just to get these noodles to cook, let the starch release and thicken up our so sauce. And uh, at that point, it's going to be taste to see if it needs anything and eat and enjoy. So we'll go ahead and let this go for a little while. This smells amazing. So it's been reducing even more. So um, how many times can I do it? Um, as you can see, we started up here. We're now down to there. So all those flavors have just reduced and made an awesome ham pot pie. Over here, you'll see gorgeous. So mine, I like to keep a little runny. If you like it to be a little bit more of like a gravy or a little thicker, uh, the one of the things you can do is take just a little bit of flour, like a tablespoon of flour, and then mix it with some water, and then stir it in there, and then that's gonna go ahead and just thicken it up um, to your liking. So again, you thicken it to the point that you like it. This is where I like mine. Again, I like it to be a little bit more like a soup, because I also know that whenever it cools down, it's gonna get pretty thick um, from all the starch that's been in the, um, ham pot pie. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that this will teach you a way to use up some of your ham as a leftover. Something else that I thought of, I don't have any mashed potatoes or corn leftover, but one of the things you could do is make like a homemade shepherd's pie with it. So you would just take like a pound of hamburger, brown that up, 
uh, get some brown gravy mix, throw your corn in there, and then take your mashed potatoes, layer them on top, go ahead and bake that for probably about 45 minutes at 350, 375, and then top it with like a little bit of cheddar cheese, bake it for like another 10 minutes, and then you would have a shepherd's pie. So hopefully I'll have a video on that here one of these days soon, because uh, I haven't had shepherd's pie in so long. But again, hope everyone had a great Easter. Hope that this helps you with an idea of how to use up some of your leftover ham and another way that to, to to eat, you know, food instead of throwing it away. So I hope everyone had a chef and good time. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Please subscribe, please give me the thumbs up. Uh, and as always, hope everyone has a wonderful day.